Okay, so many of you, I'm sure, will know that Meghan Markle made a speech yesterday at the One Young World Summit in Manchester. And so naturally, I was waiting all day to watch the thing live. I had notifications turned on on YouTube, really looking forward to it. But what I was not prepared for was the rest of the summit. It was so inspiring. I don't think the world has ever witnessed a bigger circle jerk. So as you will all see in this video, Meghan Markle didn't disappoint. Her speech was as vacuous and self-important as ever. But I think you're going to enjoy the other people just as much, if not more. I don't think the world has ever seen so many stunning and brave souls in one space. The One Young World Summit kicked off with this spectacular performance. <laughs> Which was nice. So after the dance routine that taught the young world about diversity, came a song about diversity. Certainty that we hold, and who's right, and who's wrong, we're not so different anyway. <laughs> So after the diversity dance and the diversity song, the children's head of year, I mean, um, Mayor of Manchester, Andy Burnham, came out to talk about diversity and climate change and women's equality and slavery. So let's listen to head of year seven, Mr. Burnham. I mean, Andy Burnham, head of, uh, no, sorry, he's not there. Mayor of Manchester. Thank you, David. Wow. How good is this? Isn't this great, Y7? I'm your proper approachable head of year, Mr. Burnham. Yeah, I've got a degree in English from Cambridge, but I've still got a Manchester accent. Yeah, I've been in politics since the mid-90s, despite only being 52 years of age, but I'm proper down to earth. This is amazing. Welcome, officially, to you all, to Manchester, the home of the suffragettes. Remember the suffragettes? Remember the suffragettes, boys and girls? We had a test on it last term. No, that was the Romans, Michael. No, Bodicea was not a suffragette. Medusa was the one with snakes in her hair. No, no. Emmeline Pankhurst? What did you just say about Emmeline Pankhurst, David? No, she was not a le... Out. Detention. I'm just disappointed, really, more than anything else. It's disappointing. I expect better from you lot. You may not know that we are also the birthplace of the trade unions in this country. <laughs> Fighting for workers' rights. Boo! Oh, sorry. If you go back to the American Civil War... Oh, God, what? The American Civil War now, Andy? Jesus. Right, if we go back to the American Civil War, kids, way back in September, take yourselves back to September, the American Civil War. We had a test on it, Jenny. You got an A. But, and as you'll know, uh, there was a blockade on, on cotton from the states, the southern states in the US, and they decided that they would refuse to handle slave-picked cotton. 160 years ago, Manchester saying to the world, black lives matter. That's the city that you're in for this brilliant One Young World Summit. And in 2011, almost 150 years after those cotton protests, the descendants of those Manchester heroes from 1862, looted Foot Locker and many other sportswear stores and claimed their sovereign right to the limited edition Air Jordans. Anyway, I think that's about all I can stomach of Mr. Burnham. Then Bob Geldof showed up and Bob had this really insightful take about how um, anyone who's right-leaning is... Um, is basically an arsehole. And that everyone in that building, who's, you know, right on lefty, is um, 
superior to that, which, you know, I thought was really inspiring. We are civilized people because we don't pay obeisance to nationalism, that crudest, that most childish, that most infantile and facile of all political ideologies. But there are others, and we know their names. And we know their names. Sure you do, Bob. <laughs> Is it Live Aid today? No, Live Aid finished 40 years ago, Bob. I don't like Mondays. Yeah, we know, Bob. Just before I came into this building, there was a van playing the British National Anthem, perverting the National Anthem with a banner alongside it saying Britain first, Britain for the British. Oh, well, that just won't do, will it? and it makes me sick. And I had a picture of a nuclear bomb exploding, a big mushroom cloud with the single word, no, underneath it. No to the despots. No to the autocrats. No to the killers and the would-be leaders who will not allow us to breathe let alone live the life that you wish to and a world you wish to leave to your children. So leadership, yes. But where is it? OK, I promise we're going to get to the Meghan Markle speech now. But this is insane. This event is organised by the United Nations and they're talking about despots and autocrats. And um, everyone who's got up there has spoken about how they want to live in a free society. That's the complete opposite of what they want. They want a one world government. They want... Agenda 2030, they want you living on a pod, they want you eating bugs, they want you desperate, they want you on your knees, they want you, he says, he doesn't want people who won't allow you to breathe, the would-be leaders who won't allow you to breathe. What about the leaders we've just had for two and a half years who don't let us fucking breathe? Don't let us go outside. Now we can't pay our bills, but we're sending billions to the Ukraine. Fuck off. Anyway, let's have a listen to uh, Meghan Markle. Please give a very warm One Young World welcome to the co-founder of Archwell, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. It is very nice to be back in the UK. Okay. And it is very nice to be back with all of you at One Young World. As you'll likely hear many times this week, look, as we just heard, you'll hear all sorts of things. Some very heavy, some very uplifting, but the resounding spirit I believe you'll hear is that you are the future. But I would like to add to that, that you are also the present. <laughs> It was several years ago in 2014 that I was first invited to be a counselor at One Young World. And in many ways at the time, I was probably a lot like each of you, young. Uh, 33, how old I am now. I think I'm like young and starry eyed. I'm all old and cynical. <laughs> I was just young and I didn't know what was going on. It was like, uh, you went 18, fresh faced, just out of school, 33. <laughs> young, ambitious, advocating for the things I deeply and profoundly believed in. You know, right about now, Megan, would be a good time to whip out that old anecdote, that old chestnut, that favourite of ours. The time that you changed the world, altered the course of history, that time you wrote to the dish soap company. Instead of saying women, they then said people are fighting Greece. Do you remember that? That was heroic. And also looking around and wondering, how on earth did I get here? <laughs> Have any of you today so far had that feeling, that pinch me moment where you just go, how am 
I here? I don't know. I think if I was in the audience rather than how am I here, I'd be thinking why am I here at this point. And there I was. I was the girl from Suits. And I was surrounded by world leaders, humanitarians, prime ministers, and activists that I had such a deep and long-standing respect and admiration for. Sounds sincere. And I was invited to pull up a seat at the table. I was so overwhelmed by this experience. I think, I think I even saved my little paper place card that said my name on it. I don't know if I'm insane, right? And I've got, I don't know, Megan derangement syndrome, probably have at this point. But, and I might be nitpicking and splitting hairs here, but you think you kept your place name. I mean, you think. I mean, is she so worried now that everything she says is going to be <laughs> demonstrated to be a lie that she has to say, I think I kept the place, Matt, in case anyone rummages through her trash or something? <laughs> um, just proof. Proof that I was there. And proof that I belonged. I don't know. It feels like the seven-minute speech she gave is almost entirely her talking about how she felt the last time she was there. It kind of sounds like an episode of a podcast. It's odd. It sounds odd to me. Again, maybe I've got MDS, Megan Derangement Syndrome. God knows. Because the truth was, I wasn't sure that I belonged. I was so nervous. So nervous. So, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll stop interrupting. That, was, that wasn't called for. Oh, I doubted myself, and I wondered. I wondered if I was good enough to even be there, if what I was doing in the world albeit important and meaningful as far as I saw it, was it deserving to have a seat at this table? Hmm, and I wonder what conclusion you arrived at, Megan. But one young world saw in me what I wanted to see fully in myself. They saw in me, just as I see in you, the present and the future. Is she going to run for president? The first year I joined the delegation in Dublin, I worked with a young woman from Eritrea. And she described how she had escaped her home country, fleeing with bullets fired above her head. I still remember it so well. I remember my shock. And I also remember her courage. Almost as courageous as that time that you wrote to the dish soap. All right, I'll stop, I'll stop. I followed up that trip, as David mentioned, to joining the delegation again in 2016 in Ottawa. I was very lucky to receive a day off of filming, specifically to take a quick flight from Toronto up to Ottawa. Tell us, Megan, how did the, uh, how did the flight go? How did the, was the trip good? Yeah? All, no, all went smoothly? I joined you in London in 2019, and by that point, it's fair to say, my life had changed rather significantly. I was now married. And I was now a mom. Woo! Yeah, Megan! My worldview had expanded exponentially, seeing the global community through the eyes of my child. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? My worldview had expanded exponentially, seeing the global community through the eyes of my child. Hmm. Okay. And I would ask, what is this world he would come to adopt? And what can we do? What can I do to make it better? Megan, I think we all know you've done enough already. Do you remember in 1993 what you did for women all over the USA when you wrote to that dish soap company? Do you remember how you made the people of South Africa dance in the streets, nay, rejoice in the streets like the day Mandela was released from prison, just the same when you got married to Prince Harry? They did the same thing. It meant the same to them as when Mandela was released from prison. You're like Mandela, basically. Modern Mandela, but a woman, which is better. I am thrilled that my husband is able to join me here this time. Oh God, the cameras. Uh, look, thrilled Harry. Oh, I hope she doesn't hit me. To 
be able to see and witness firsthand my respect for this organization, this incredible organization, and all that it provides as well as accomplishes. One Young World has been an integral part of my life for so many years before I met him. So to meet again here on UK soil with him by my side makes it all feel full circle. Yeah, that's, that's great that Megan's happy that her husband's there because it makes her feel good about the One Young World ceremony thing that they're there for. And um, I think I get the point of what she's saying. It's like... Yeah, I think I get it. And just as a sidebar, earlier this afternoon, we sat down with a few of you delegates, and it was incredibly inspiring, the resounding themes that came up about representation, about inclusion, about access, and about trying to shift the global perspective for all of us as a global community to one of curiosity over criticism. My husband has long advocated for important and necessary impact in the world, focusing a huge part of his life's work on the youth. So for both of us, bearing witness to the power that you hold in your hands and the unbridled enthusiasm and energy that you have to see things come to fruition, it is just an absolute privilege. I'm incredibly humbled to not just stand before each of you, but to stand beside you. We often hear people say the time is now, but I'm going to double down on that by saying your time is now. The important work can't wait for tomorrow. And this week, the world is watching as you cement your place in history by showcasing the good that you are doing today in the present moment as we embrace the moment of now to create a better tomorrow. And with that, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to declare this year's One Young World Summit officially open. Is this what the future looks like? 